Good evening. I am waiting for our author to come on for tonight. This is Thursday and we are continuing our Thursday Hadassah's Crown Authors Seminar and Author Series. So she is here. I'm going to go ahead and invite her in. And um, as she is in a screen, what I will do is just say that last week, hello, hello. Hey, how's it going? Going good. What about for you? Pretty good. Thank you. Good, good. I'm just showing all of the children's books that we yeah. have on our shelf right now. Mm -hmm. And so tonight we are very blessed to have the author of this baby, one of our newest. And I'm yeah. going to pause our theme song until we're done here. But um, this is, we have with us Keisha Harper. She yeah. is the author of Have You Ever Seen a Zebra Eat Zucchini? And I fell in love with that title when I first yeah. heard it. And so then when we added the amazing illustrations, uh -huh. it just became one of the cutest projects that I've ever seen. And I won't go on and on and on about the details of it because I, that's why she's here. And so we're <laughs> going to talk about her, her, her publishing journey and all of that. So thank you for being here with us. And You're I'll welcome. go ahead and turn it over to you and let you thank share you. with the audience who you are and your vision for this awesome project. Thank you. Well, my name is Keisha Harper. I'm the mother of one toddler. I um, work in a large school system in the Atlanta area, and I um, service children that have special needs. Um, and then in my spare time, I like to run and hike and things like that. Um, I would say um, I've always been um, a writer ever since I've known. I think my teachers around middle school, that's when they started really kind of honing in on my writing. And mm -hmm. um, it continued up until graduate school, actually, even um, from my teachers to my professors, they noticed it. And what I noticed that they always would say was, you are a very creative writer. So they were able to pick up on my imagination, you know, and those type of things. And that's what I enjoy doing the most is creative writing. Um, in like 2008, I actually came home from um, undergrad and I just sat down and one day and I wrote a, a, a manuscript. Um, and actually, it's one of the manuscripts that I sent to you. I sent um, several of them to you. But it was a little adventure about a, a bumblebee. And I wrote it in one day. I kind of put that to the side. You know, you go through life and all of those type of things. Mm -hmm. And then maybe around um, 2018, I picked it up again, finally uh -huh. completed that. And then maybe around the end of 2018, I started writing um, the book that you said, Have You Ever Seen a Zebra Eat Zucchini? And mm -hmm. what happened with that is that um, I think when you're around children, they really spark imagination. So mm -hmm. I already have my creative side, but then I have a toddler. So she says a lot of little silly and funny things, and we kind of go back and forth. So one day we were in the car, and I just turned around to her, just being silly. And I said, you know, have you ever seen a zebra eat zucchini? And she just started smiling. <laughs> and and it, really, it just took off from there, just kind of having a silly moment with my daughter so and that's oh, why I gave it that title because um, that's what came to me first and then I worked my way um, back throughout the alphabet so that's neat yeah. that is so cute <laughs> and then you have someone there to test it out on yeah. and to gain content <laughs> so my story or my journey was a little bit backward from that because I yeah. always loved kids but when it came to teaching I chose high school because I said you know I just mm -hmm. think I can deal with the more mature ones a little better all day, every day with 25, 35 in a classroom. Yes. But at the same time, I just loved English so much that that was all I wanted to teach. But okay. then when my son came, my appreciation for children's literature truly uh -huh. spiraled through the roof. And yes. I didn't write my first children's book until my son was, you know, he was much older. So I, I couldn't okay. test it out on him. Um, it is about him, but so our, our journeys are similar. We love people in books. We love little people, um, but, you know, mine was just a little bit backward from yours. So we're, I want you to tell a little bit more about the book, and then also because you don't plan to stop here. You're not going to be a one-shot wonder. You have some more things that you have up your sleeve and that you're planning to do in the future, so talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so a little bit more about the book. Um, I would say probably the age range for the book would be two through five. 
um, it does have to have some alliteration in there. And basically, alliteration is when you have that repetition of a sound um, closely related um, in a book within words that are connected, like apple, ant, you know, that ah and a sound. So there's some alliteration in there, which is, um, I think, really good that the children can learn that. And then, of course, you have your alphabet, upper and lowercase letters that they can go back and um, kind of practice. And then also in there are some unique characters. Um, and some unique foods as well. Even me, when I was going through and I was looking at certain letters, I'm like, what can I put for this particular, you know, letter? So there are some interesting um, uh, animals as well as uh, food uh, foods in the book that uh, children can learn from. Counting, they can count the animals, count the objects, and as well as they can um, hone in on coloring as well as the different colors. So there's a lot of educational things in that book for our children. Yes, yes, there really is because you know, not only do we have all of these different animals, but these animals live in different places. So it's an opportunity to talk about sea animals versus, you know, the fowl of the air. You have underwater. I mean, yes. you have some and I'll be honest, um, my mm -hmm. sister and I were reading it, and we had, we were like, Xavier State? Like, what is that? We <laughs> had yes. So, yes, <laughs> we learned, too. So that's Absolutely. the thing. The people have to understand about children's books. They're not just for children. And right. even, you know, though some of the concepts might may, maybe basics and basic and we know our alphabet, there's still more in there, but then there's usually a message that you can take away from the book with you as well. Yes. Even with the title, you know, zucchini, um, which is a very commonly misspelled word. You know, yes. so it's kind of unique to see zucchini on the front cover of a book as well. So that's an um, opportunity as well. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So what surprised you about the process of publishing and becoming an author? <laughs> I think probably what surprised me the most were probably like the logistics of the book. Like, for example, um, what type of font do I want in the book? What size? Um, thinking about the spread of the book, you know, the dimensions of the book, mm -hmm. um, characters and those type of things so really the uh, details of the book and having to research those type of things which I do enjoy doing researching you know and looking up things but that's probably what surprised me the most and took a lot um to kind of get out and to go through yeah awesome and so now though that you've had that experience you'll never look at children's books the same and you don't take them not. for granted because you know you we just think oh well books they're books but to think about every single detail from cover to cover it's a journey it's a it's a whole new process for most people and it's one that i truly 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 love and so that's why i'm very excited about your next project that's um you know on the horizon so do you want to uh -huh. share that yeah so um okay. what i have on the horizon is kind of like a companion to have you ever seen a zebra eat zucchini the book it's actually a activity and coloring book and so the children are still going to get that alliteration in there and all of those other educational pieces. But um, mm -hmm. in addition to that, they'll be able to practice writing. So they'll be able to practice their upper and lowercase letters. And I'm really excited about that, giving the children opportunities to, um, to write and practice writing. Yeah. That's awesome. That is mm -hmm. awesome. Well, on my end, I can tell you mm -hmm. that the response has been great. But let me let you talk just for a few minutes about <laughs> the type of response that you've received not that most of it probably surprised you because I think you are part of a much larger community and you knew you have that support, but I think mm -hmm. just the level of it may have been just a little bit surprising to you. It absolutely has been, and you are correct. Um, I do have that community, and I appreciate, you know, my educational community and, of course, my family and friends and loved ones, but I don't take that for granted. Um, when I initially started getting responses of supports, I was like just literally crying every time someone said, oh, I purchased your book or oh, they sent me a text message because <laughs> um, I don't take it for granted. Um, people don't have to support you. And so when they do, I, I really do wholeheartedly appreciate that. And so like sometimes even today when someone says, oh, I purchased your book, I've got it, they send me, you know, a picture of something, I'm always thinking, I say thank you, but I just feel like I don't know how to express it enough. And I'm thinking, how can I repay back each person who's done something for me? So that's just the amount of gratitude and appreciation that I have for everyone and for the support. I, I truly appreciate that. Yeah. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. From my end, like I said, just gauging from where I sit, the uh, uh, mm -hmm. it's been tremendous and it's ongoing. And so yeah. I know that when that companion comes out, it's going mm -hmm. to be awesome as well. 
as well as any other subsequent projects that you have too. Mm -hmm. yes. So um, I guess I would say if you could give some advice to someone thinking about publishing or who has written mm -hmm. something, what are some things you might say to a new author or an aspiring author? Yeah. So what I would say um, is don't give up. What helped me through my process is I was writing manuscripts and I'm um, sending them off and sometimes, you know, receiving no's and things like that. I just mm -hmm. started thinking to myself, you just need one yes. That's all you need is just one yes. And mm -hmm. so I'm so grateful for Hadassah Crown's publishing who gave me my yes. That, that was all I needed was just that yes. Um, what I would say is don't give up. Oftentimes I think about like, um, you know, in our personal lives, sometimes people have like a checkoff list of something that they just want to do. It could be a destination or something you want to do. And so mm -hmm. you check that off. Um, to me, that's something that's just personal. And so you can get gratitude because you've personally done that. But mm -hmm. when I think about writing books, to me, it's a little bit more different because I look at it as though it's a calling. And when you have a calling to do something, it's not just about you anymore. So yes, you're grateful that you, you know, become an author and you've done that. But my mindset has been, okay, now what's the next book? Because it's a calling. And I realized that it's my voice that's being heard through the books. And so you you have a message that you have to get out to people. So there are people that are actually depending on you, whether you write a book that's educational or human, um, humor, if it's self-help, you know, motivation. So it's beyond you. So those people need to hear the message that you have. So um, you have to go for it and you have to do it and you can do it. And I would say um, maybe chunk things. You don't have to try to say, OK, I have to write a whole manuscript in one day. Maybe you write the first paragraph. Maybe you spend a day where you're just looking at fonts or you're looking at front covers or back covers. But each day, I would say spend some time, 15, 30 minutes doing something towards your book, and you will eventually get it done and, and get it accomplished. You will. Wow. That's, that's great advice because it can seem very overwhelming and mm -hmm. especially knowing, you know, even where to start. So yeah. thank you for mm -hmm. that. I appreciate that. Absolutely. So we've shown the cute book. And mm -hmm. we talked about it. So where can um, anyone watching or anyone who watches later, where can they purchase mm -hmm. the book? So they can purchase the book on Amazon by simply just doing, you know, a search. Have you ever seen a zebra eat zucchini? Um, I do plan on getting some book. Of orders in because you know many people want a personal book with an autograph so I will be doing that eventually um, if you want to the way that I can be reached is you can go on Facebook or Instagram and it's I am Keisha Harper on both of those uh, social media sites and then also I have a website it's um, I am Keisha Harper .com if you'd like to just take a look around there as well and then um, as far as an email it's uh, my name Keisha, K-E-S-H-I-A underscore Harper, H-A-R-P-E-R -E at yahoo.com. So those are some ways that I can be reached. Awesome. And you can also go to Hadassah's Crown Publishing and there's a link to the Amazon um, where you the Amazon link where you can actually purchase the book as well. So um, that's that'll be great to support this awesome author because there is not a preschooler or a, um, a toddler or, or a young child who would, will not benefit from this. And so if you have a yeah. shower coming up or you have a birthday party, any for any reason that you're looking for gifts for young children, you know, make it educational. And then, you know, support our community, support our authors, you know, while you're doing that. So that would be awesome for you to, um, to support our author here today. So what have I missed? What is it that you'd like for our audience to know that I have not um, asked at this point? Yeah, so I have some other uh, manuscripts that I'm working on. Um, the next manuscript that I'm working on is actually, I'm excited about this one, is um, it's about a little boy and his name is Jameson. So uh, when Jameson is going to the bathtub each night, he's summoning his mom to the bathtub. He's telling her that he sees a puppy in the tub. Well, Jameson has a big imagination. So the reader will come to find out whether this puppy is real. Is it a figment of his imagination? And then eventually his mom um, does come to learn the truth and she's really astonished by it. So that was a cute little book that I enjoyed writing. And then um, I do, I have several in mind. I want to challenge myself to write one that has a rhyme theme in it. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to do something like that. So I have some more uh, books in mind that I'll be writing. Awesome. Well, I'm excited and I can't wait because I've heard that part 
of mm -hmm. the um, book about Jameson, but I still don't know if there's really a puppy in the, in the tub. So I have to find yeah. out, and then you all have to wait until it's published, and then you have to buy it and read it, because I still won't tell you after I find out. So <laughs> I love that suspense. Yes. That's super, super, super cute. So anyone watching, if you all have any questions, we'll pause for just a minute. We'll continue to talk. Mm -hmm. But if you have any questions, anything else that you would like to know, I think that pretty much answers all of my questions, except I know with the things being the way they are, and I don't know if your school district has made a decision about what will happen in the fall. There's, yes. It's not likely you have any events coming up that you're going to be out and about at. I know yes. there are some vendor fairs that are actually here in the mm -hmm. Greenville and Anderson area over the next few weekends, like between now and the middle of August. But I mm -hmm. truly have not decided. I don't right now. I don't think I'm going to participate just because sometimes you'll go places and people will say we're going to social distance and this has to be in place and this has to be in place. But then it's not. And then I'm afraid that, you know, people still get in your space and they don't necessarily wear a mask. And I don't know that my mask is, is good enough to protect us both. So I'm just I'm still kind of looking for online opportunities, which some yeah. have come up. And so uh -huh. I just, you know, we'll use the Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all the social media opportunities we can, as well as Zoom and free conference call. And mm -hmm. I, I was asked today to actually do some school appearances through Zoom. So oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to that because I missed that. I, I had my last school visit in February, and mm -hmm. then I haven't seen any babies since then. So yeah. I yeah. will look forward to seeing into a classroom via Zoom. That is going to yeah. be awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, my district, um, they have made a decision and we're going to um, delay the start of school for a little while and then we'll go to virtual, you know, and just kind of watch how things go and then um, make decisions as we progress. But likewise, um, right now, um, with the way that things are, I think that um, it would just be best to, to stick to virtual. But I do look forward to the days that I can go into the schools, libraries, hospitals, and those type of things and have those connections and events, you know, in person. I look forward to that as well. Exactly. Awesome. Awesome. Well, it's been great speaking with you. I greatly appreciate it. And seeing you, I've seen pictures and we've spoken, yeah. but this is actually our first face-to-face. -face. So virtual is great for that kind of thing. Absolutely. So, thank you again for the opportunity to work with you on this wonderful, wonderful book and project. And I look forward to our continued collaboration and partnership. Thank you again. Thank You've you. been a, an awesome person to work with. And I've learned a lot from you from this process. So thank, thank you, you again. I do hope you'll yeah. have a great night and a great weekend. You too. And thank you to Felicia George. Thank you so much. Yes. And I didn't see if she checked in. Sometimes she's on mm -hmm. here. But she's mm -hmm. not, but I'm sure she'll go back and watch the video. Yeah. So I owe Felicia as well. So thank you, Felicia. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Okay, well, have a great okay. night. Have a good evening. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you all for joining us. We will be back next Thursday night with another author. And so that information will be posted to Instagram um, probably tomorrow and what I will do is revise the schedule or update the schedule because we have um, a number of new authors who have been added to the schedule so let's keep this Thursday night thing going it's been great and you all have a wonderful night bye-bye